After more than a year of protests over an old growth forest at Ferry Creek, three dozen protesters are still standing their ground at this makeshift camp. Recycle and like, you know, eat less meat. Like those, those are all good things, but like, it's not enough. It's not going to change the destructive practices that we have going on at a quick enough rate. Nothing but like, actually putting pressure on our governments like this and different corporations to change the, their practices is going to make things better. Last month, British Columbia's top court ruled that logging can continue and it banned the protesters from blocking access roads into the forestry site. Police have dismantled the main protest camps on the hillside, but these activists won't budge. Their goal is to slow down the machines by hiding in the logging areas, despite the risk from falling trees. It worked. They didn't cut any more trees in that spot. It was terrifying, not going to lie. These are the things we have to do. Like, we have to put our bodies on the line. Like, you know, no victory without sacrifice. Since the court's ruling, the protesters can only access the site on foot. Monsoon and Mongoose are former tree planters. They have to walk a four-hour trail to join the few activists still at the camp, waiting for supplies. Cheese is very important. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> On the way in, we stop in front of a red cedar nicknamed Grandfather Tree. It has become the symbol of their fight to stop these ancient trees from being cut down. It's beautiful. I feel pretty, pretty blessed. Also, somehow, protected. Amid the standoff, British Columbia's government announced it will suspend logging across 2.6 million hectares of old-growth forests for two years. Dora was one of the first activists at Ferry Creek. She says the province's deferral decision doesn't go far enough. We want a moratorium. A deferral just means that we're going to be back here blockading when the deferral is up. That's not the way it should work. It should just be permanent protection. Troll, come in, troll. The fight over Ferry Creek has become Canada's largest civil disobedience movement with more than 1,100 arrests. Jimmy Thompson is the editor of the local newspaper, The Capital Daily. He investigated the violent methods that the mounted police have used towards the activists. When protesters tell me that the RCMP is being excessively violent, and then they send me their hospital records that relate to their broken rib, um, it does make sense. They understand that they can basically operate with impunity because there's so little media access out there. Since the early days of the protest, journalists have also faced aggression from police. Yes, back on. So when you back up. Yes, so back up. You are to be silent while doing your job. It's so frustrating to watch. I mean, this guy, he's just so ignorant about how this all works. And he's got so much power. This is the kind of treatment that media have, have experienced out at Ferry Creek, where they're arbitrarily told changing and nonsensical rules. And they have no choice because they're out in the middle of nowhere. Several media outlets took a case against police to British Columbia's Supreme Court, which condemned police for their attempts to block coverage at Ferry Creek. The protest movement is a growing concern for the logging industry. The sector is worth $13 billion, or 5% of the province's GDP. The main logging company operating in Ferry Creek says it's worried about the future for its 1,000-plus employees. We take the stance that the old growth is not in danger. The changes that the environmentalists are asking for are 100% stop old growth logging. It's, not, it's nonsensical. It's not going to happen. By deferring into further years of not being able to harvest the wood, we can manage that for a period of time, and then it's just not going to be something that we can manage anymore. British Columbia's forestry industry has faced environmental blockades in the past. In the early 1990s, thousands of Canadians rallied to save the Claycott Sound Forest and its ancient trees. Oh, the protesters are going to go away. They always do. They usually leave broken Indigenous communities behind. This will be no different. Gary Merkel led an independent review of how British Columbia's old growth forests are managed. He says significant changes are needed to protect them. Ferry Creek is what I call the tip of the iceberg. We need to change our paradigm. 
We need to change the way we view the forest and the way we think about it. We need to change that paradigm from a timber managing for constraints to a paradigm of managing for ecosystem health. You can't regrow old growth in a lot of places in, in any reasonable time frame. The government accepted all 14 recommendations from Merkel's report, including that it must consult Indigenous groups on environmental decisions and prioritise conservation. As for Ferry Creek, the Supreme Court is expected to rule in the next few days on whether logging can continue.